Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. So recently you probably picked up a, a new iPad or you just want to get used to some of the things that are on there that you're just not too sure how to use. But in this video I'll be going over some of the basic tips, user interface, gesture control and all sorts of things that you absolutely need to know about your iPad in order to get the most of it. So make sure you watch this whole video, enjoy the tips and I also have those time stamps throughout as well so if there's something in particular that you want to be able to get used to or you're not too sure how to use just check out the timestamps in the description and you can just skip to the bits that you want to find out a little bit more about. Obviously, if you are enjoying this video, hit the thumbs up button because it really helps to get this video out to more people. So let's take a deep dive into how to use your brand new iPad or the iPad that you're just not too sure how to use and figure out how to get the most out of it. So one of the very first things you want to do is get used to the different gestures available on iPad OS because there are quite a few of them and they can be a little bit tricky to learn at first. They have the similar ones to the iPhone, so if you're already using an iPhone, you're going to be used to the majority of them just to navigate the user interface. But one of the first ones is dragging up with four fingers will enable your multitasking. So that will bring up all your different apps that are open at a time. And once they're open, just tap anywhere on that and that will get rid of them. Now, if you were to open an application, for example, so if we open up our Chrome browser here and we want to go home, you have your ability to close it like that. But if you want to do a different type of gesture, you can just pinch on the screen and that will also close it. When you have multiple applications open, there's also another gesture that you can use to very quickly navigate between them. So four fingers on the screen and you can drag back and forth and that'll flick you back between the last applications you've been using and forward again. You also have this little bar down at the bottom as well, and you can do the same sort of thing there. But sometimes it's just easy to be able to flick it across just like so. Again, once you're done with that, close it like that. And if you want to bring up your multitasking, four fingers, drag it to the middle there, and there we go. That'll pop those open for you. Pinch to close, and we are done. Another nifty little feature is if you have an Apple Pencil and you want to be able to quickly take a screenshot of something, just drag it across from the bottom left corner there and that'll take a snap. And with this, you can crop what it is that you want to take a picture of. And if you want to annotate on there, so say for example, you were taking a picture of a document or something on a website that you wanted to do, what you do is you can then draw on it. There we go, so pop that on there and then you can send it to different people. So you can either click done to save it or if you tap in this little arrow and box at the top here, you'll have the option to send it via an email, text message, any other kind of message as well on there. So that's really handy and that will include the annotation that you have. Okay, so whilst we're on the subject of gestures, let's talk about a couple of the keyboard gestures available to you. So when you've got your keyboard open, especially if you're on the 12.9 inch or large iPad, it can get a bit hard to use one handed. But if you pinch on your keyboard, you'll be given this small little dinky keyboard, which is really handy to use. So you could drop that down into the bottom here and just use it one handed. If you were to have it in portrait mode, that is also a lifesaver rather than having to stretch your thumbs right across the screen to be able to use things. Also, when it's in this mode, you also have something called swipe. So you can swipe on your keyboard like so, and that will then start popping the text in there. Once you're done with that, swipe it like so. So pinch out, and then that will make the keyboard larger again, and it just goes back to being a normal size keyboard, which is really handy. Another really nifty little gesture, and this is available on your iPhone as well, is if you push and hold on the keyboard, you get a little cursor. So you can then control that using the keyboard to navigate around. And that way it just enables some finer editing of your text. So say for example, I wanted to get rid of that there because I've made a typo. You just push and hold and then you drag it across and I can start deleting that, which again is really handy. And it is available on iPhone. People seem to forget it because it used to be available on 3D Touch. And obviously with iPhones not having that anymore, you feel like you've lost it. But actually this gesture is still available on iPhones. So another gesture to get used to, if you're wanting to copy and paste some text, so you just tap on your text and highlight what you want, and you can either press copy or paste, or if you're using a mouse and keyboard, you also have the different controls there. But three finger pinch in will also copy it. And then once you're done with that, if you wanted to paste it, three finger pinch out, like so, will also paste it. So another nifty little feature. If you wanted to be able to undo what you've just done, it's three fingers back. So you swipe three fingers across the screen to the left and that will undo it. And if you want to redo it, it's three fingers across from the left to the right and that will pop it back in there. So to undo, three fingers towards the left. To redo, three fingers towards the right. So some nice little sort of copy, paste, undo and redo gestures there that you can use with your iPad. 
So you've probably heard about the iPad's ability to do multitasking. And one of the things that I really like about the iPad is it gives you quite a focused workflow. Now to do multitasking, when you have an application open on your screen, so for in this example, we have a Chrome open there. All you do is you drag up slowly from the bottom here and that will give you your dock. Now the application that you want to have open alongside that, take it, drag it, and pull it across to the side of the screen and then drop it. That will then give you an instance of that application. So I have one on this side and one on this side. Now this bar down the middle is your resizing bar. So for example, if I want Safari to be larger on this size, I can have it here. If I wanna do that, I can do it this way, which again is really handy and very easy to use. And that means I can interact with both applications at the same time. And then obviously once you're done with that and you don't want to be able to split screen it, just drag it all the way across and that will get rid of it. Now, as you can see here, I'm using two instances of Safari. So that is a really handy for different productivity apps. So for example, if you have a document open on one side, you can have another one open here as well and copy and paste things are back and forth, which is very, very handy. And one of the great things is iPadOS will remember different instances of the app. So if I close that down and I go to reopen it, there we go, it remembers that I have two instances of Safari there. So then I could open up another individual instance of Safari. So you can have your workflow open across multiple different things. So another awesome thing about multitasking on the iPad is the ability to have something called slide over. So with your application you want to turn into that, drag it down from the top here and drop it onto the application that you have here. And that will now create a new slide over window. Now, if I want to drop different applications into that, so say, for example, I want to pop Chrome in there, just drag it in, pop it in there. And that means as I'm working through this, I can very quickly, like I would on an iPhone, swap between those applications. I can then throw it away that way and get back to my work. If I want to resummon it, just drag it back from that screen. Now, where this comes in really handy is if you're using things like messaging applications or if you're using music things, things that you don't need to have on the screen all the time. Someone drops you a message, all you do is you quickly swipe over, reply to that message because you can interact with this window as if it's a normal application, and then you just throw it away. If you want to change your track, quickly swipe it over, hit the music, swipe it away, and it doesn't interrupt your workflow. So a really nifty thing to remember. So. You've got your new iPad and you want to be able to change things on the home screen. If you've got an iPhone already, you're probably going to be pretty familiar with this, but there's a few things in here that you'll probably want to get used to. First thing, if you want to move things around, all you do, push and hold, and it'll bring up this option here for edit home screen. Tap on that and you can drag things around so you can put things into a new folder and create a new folder. So say, for example, I do that. You just drag an application on top of another one, pop it into this folder, and you can give it a name. If I drag that back out, that'll take it out of the folder and put it back onto the home screen. If I want to delete the application, I just tap this cross in the top left corner of it, and that will uninstall the application and remove it from my iPad. To move the applications around, all you do is you push and hold on it when they're in this jiggle mode, and just drop it anywhere on the screen, and that will reposition it. Now, one thing to note is they will all stay in this left to right orientation and from the top down to the bottom. So you can't customize it. For example, I couldn't drop an application down here, which is a bit of a pain, but it's each to their own. Also, if you have an application that you're using all the time, you can then drag them down into the dock, which is really handy if you are doing things like multitasking. So I can just take that, drop it into the dock, and leave it there. Once you're done and you've customized it to your heart's content, press the done button and that is all sorted. Now you may have noticed another thing on there as well, which is my widgets. And this is basically putting some of the most common used apps that I have on there in terms of visual aesthetics. So news, my notes, and just top things that I wanna be able to jump into at a glance. And to change that, all you need to do is if you push and hold on any blank space on the screen, I can then remove those applications by pressing the negative symbol there. I can edit them by just tapping on it and I can change those around. I can add smart stacks, which basically has that widget I can interact with and flick through it through all of these applications, which is really handy. And if I wanna add something brand new, I just tap on the plus here and it gives me a whole list of different widgets that I can then drag onto that like so. And bam, that is now added onto my home screen. If I wanted to add a smart stack, so that thing I just gave you an example of there, take another widget, drag it on top of it, and now I can flick through that, and it just means that that one key square I can just go to, flick through at a time, and we're done. Once I'm done and I've customized it to my heart's content, press done, and we're sorted. I can now interact with that new widget that I've put on there, and we're done. So along with your new iPad, you also got an Apple Pencil. And this has all sorts of different utilities. Obviously you can 
draw things and that is pretty self-explanatory. But there's a really interesting way that you can convert your handwritten text into just normal type text. And all you do is you write out what it is that you want to type. And in the same way that you'd copy anything else, you push to select it and then use these sort of like little icons at the top, tap on it, and I can now copy as text. So if I tap on that there, and I go to any blank space on my document, so here we go, and I will be able to paste that. Hello, how are you? So that takes my handwritten text and turns it into normal conventional type text. So it's very easy. If you are jotting down loads of notes for a meeting, you can then send those across via email in something that is better than a my spider scroll, which the iPad is pretty good at translating. So again, all you do is you push and hold, copy as text, and then just paste it into whatever document or email that you want to do. So another nifty little feature is if you press on this button here, it'll bring up the Apple Pencil case. And that'll give you your pen, your highlighter, your pencil, your eraser, your ruler, and all your different colors, which again is exceptionally handy. If you tap on one of these as well, you can change the opacity of it, the width and the thickness of what you're drawing as well. And that will just give you different customization options for your pen. So for example, hi. There we go. So as easy as that to change how you're writing, the colors and the tool that you're using with your pencil. Now you can customize the way this pencil works as well by going into your settings and scrolling down to Apple Pencil. And on here you have a double tap feature which you can enable. I have it as off just because it frustrates me sometimes when I accidentally knock it. But it's really handy to use if you're using a lot of sort of art applications. And as you can see here, there's different things. So I could have it so I'd double tap like so, and that would bring up all the different colors available to me. So I can very quickly on the fly switch the color I'm writing in. Could double tap it and it'll turn it into an eraser and I can just rub out what I've just done wrong. So that is in settings, Apple Pencil, and it'll give you all of the different tools here. And another nifty little feature that might be appealing to you is something called Scribble. So if you turn that on, Basically, what it does is it allows you to handwrite into any text input bar. So say, for example, you were searching for something on Google or in Safari, you could write that in there. So if I type in Balding Gamers, There we go. That'll instantly convert that into text, and that way I can type into something like a search bar and it'll find it for me. So if you're using the Apple Pencil to navigate the user interface and you're using the Apple Pencil all the time, you can just literally write it into any of those search fields and it'll change it into text, and then it'll search really nice and easy. One last thing with the Apple Pencil to charge it, because it can be quite unfamiliar sometimes for people, so literally just drop it onto the top there and that will automatically start wirelessly charging it. So one interesting thing that you probably want to change is your control center. Now, if you drag down from the top right, that will bring up your different sort of most commonly used user interface options. So like my Wi-Fi, my Bluetooth, I've got my Do Not Disturb on there, my screen brightness, my volume controls as well. And for me, I have my ability here to do screen recording, and if I tap back, that'll take me here. Now, one of the great things about this, if you long press on any of these icons, so say, for example, the Wi-Fi, you come to a new place, you want to connect to the Wi-Fi, instead of having to go through the settings, all you need to do, push and hold it, and that'll bring up this option here. If I push and hold it again, that'll search for all the Wi-Fi in my area, and I can just jump onto that. I tap to go back, and that'll bring me here. Now, these are really handy to have just, again, at a very quick fly, you can be in any application, you drop down, go to that, and that'll take you into it. And to customize it, go to your settings, go to control center, and you've got the option here to remove those or to add different applications into your control center. So the most commonly used, I guess, settings, you probably want to have in there so that way at a fly, you can literally drag down, go into it and change something without having to go into the settings all the time. So a really handy one to use. One of the last tips I want to talk about is something called Spotlight. And what that does is it allows you to search your iPad, your cloud storage and the web for whatever it is that you want to search for. So if you drag down anywhere on the screen, all I need to do is start searching for something. So let's go for Bolden Gamers. I type that in and I can search for Safari, I can search through all of my notes, I can search through all of the files. And Spotlight is really good. It'll search for anything that is named after the Bolden Gamers. So if I label something as a Bolden Gamers file or an image or a video, for example, that will be on my storage. And instead of having to go through different applications to find what it is I'm looking for, I can drop it into Spotlight and that will search the whole system and any cloud storage I have synced up to this as well. I've then got the option to fall back and search on Safari if it's just something I want to search for. So rather than having to open up like a web browser or a file browser, all you need to do, as I said, drag down anywhere on the screen, type it in what you're looking for and bam, you're ready to go.
One last thing I want to talk about is mouse support. So the iPad does work with a mouse and a keyboard. In this case, I have the Apple Magic Mouse 2, which I'm just going to turn on and show you how to pair that up with this device. OK, so all you need to do to attach your mouse is go to your settings, go to Bluetooth, and that will then search for it. If it's not a Bluetooth mouse and you have it plugged in, then it will automatically detect it and start working. And then once that is on there, you will see this little icon. Now, this enables you to use a mouse with the system. And it does work a little bit different to a normal mouse. So a couple of things to get used to. If you drag it down to the bottom, then that will bring up your dock, like so. So that way you can switch between your different applications. But if you want to go to the home screen, just keep on dragging all the way down. And then that will activate your home screen. And if you want to do your multitasking, there we go. Drag down again when you're on any blank space. And then you can click onto this. So say, for example, I click here. I can then interact with this. Now, what you'll find is when you drag over anything with it, as you can see there, the cursor turns into this sort of like little square. And that just replicates your finger touch. So the iPad is form basically made to be used with touch input. So the mouse ultimately replicates a touch rather than just a standard cursor that you're probably used to. But it will work in the way that you'd get on something like Windows or on your Mac. So I can double click there to select everything. I can right click as well. And if I swipe all the way back down, that will take me to my home screen. So it is really handy to use if you're using it with a Bluetooth mouse, a Bluetooth keyboard. You can use it very similar to the way you'd use a laptop. So a great little tip there if you want to be able to just up your game in terms of how you use the iPad for work and productivity. So the next one I want to talk about is something called Handoff. And what this does is it allows you to pick up an application that's currently open on one of your other iOS devices or macOS devices. So for example, at the moment, I have Safari open on my MacBook, but maybe I'm about to close that down and I want to continue what I'm doing, but on my iPad. This little icon here will show you what application is open on another device I'm currently using. It tells me what device it is. So there's a little MacBook symbol. And all you do is you tap on it and that will then load up exactly what I was just looking at on my MacBook. So for example, the Bolding Gamers website. Now, one of the great things about this is, for example, you get an email come through on your iPhone, but you want to be able to type back to it or read it in a bit more detail, but you don't want to do it on the iPhone because it's a smaller screen. All you do is with the application open, open up your iPad, and that would then show up in this icon just here, which allows you to pull that email across from your iPhone and start working on it on your iPad. So a really nifty little feature there. So fingers crossed you have enjoyed that video and you found something useful in there. If you have, be sure to hit the subscribe button because we do all sorts of videos like this, user guides, product unboxings, and just tech deep dives. So make sure you come along for some more awesome content in the future. It also really helps the channel to grow. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions at all or anything else that you'd like me to do a further video on, by all means, pop those down in the comments below and I'll be sure to put together another video or a follow-up video about some things that maybe you're not too sure about or that you want to learn a little bit more about. In the meantime, stay safe and we will be back very soon. Bye.